On today's elevator parts video, I'm going to be showing you how to wire up monitor elevator buttons. Let's go ahead and get started. So this isn't the first time that we've seen monitor fixtures on this channel. You might remember in the past, I worked on some long elevator projects and long elevator used monitor fixtures. So we got to see some of Long's version of monitor, but these are just kind of your standard monitor fixtures. This current one is already wired, but we're gonna be uh, changing it a little bit. So this particular style of button, I'm not sure what brand of elevator this was from, but it wasn't like long or anything. This was just probably using in just some generic elevator. In this particular style though, we have a round ring and just a round button. And there's actually a similar style that long used just like this. However, instead of it being round, it was a, a square and then the circle button. So if we pull it down here and take a look at the back, you'll notice here that the base is the same base that we saw on the long stuff. And well, that's to be expected. These are monitor buttons. And the wiring for this is very, very similar to the Epco video that I made recently. So you'll notice here that this button is already wired up and I currently have it set up on three volts with two white LEDs, which is why I don't have any resistors. If I were to use like a red LED, I would need to add a resistor in here so that I don't burn out the LEDs. If I push the button in, you'll see that they both light up. So my main reason really for rewiring this are the contacts are kind of dirty. I never properly took these apart to clean them. And that's something that's important, uh, especially if you have dirty contacts because you'll get a kind of a response like this. You'll see it's kind of intermittent and even pushing it really hard, it, it doesn't work very well. I'm also taking this opportunity to convert my LEDs to incandescent. Now, the current method I'm using now is the method I use when I don't have PSB type bulbs, which are what these take. These are PSB bulbs and this is the type of lamp holder it uses. And this would slide into here and you would hook up your terminals here. But if you don't have PSB bulbs, a good solution is to take the LED and bend the terminals on the side and connect it in here. And it works just fine and it allows you to put whatever colors you want in these buttons. Now the wiring for this is going to follow the exact same schematics that you can find on my EPCO wiring page. Because these are very similar to EPCO, just the contact layout is a little bit different and we'll get to that here in a little bit. But let's go ahead and get right on into this. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off all of the old wiring and we'll get started with a fresh batch of wires and I'll, I'll show you how to hook it all up. Pulling the buttons off is easy enough and underneath there's these little spacers. But as for the button, we've seen these before before, you just have to take these screws off. Now that the buttons are apart, we can actually take a better look at the contact arrangement of these fixtures. So in the EPCO video, these two contacts on the back, so if you're looking from the back, these two side ones get connected when the button's pressed in. However, with monitor, you'll notice they go down the sides. So in order to make a circuit, you would need to connect to these ends, the opposite ends. So not these, these. That's mainly the only difference between this and EPCO. And again, if you're taking these off, I recommend cleaning the contacts. You'll notice here they're kind of dirty. I would just use something like sandpaper to clean the metal contacts for this because it'll make this thing work a lot better. So I've got the two buttons cleaned up and I'm ready to put in the bulbs. So in my case, I'm using these six PSBs. And these are just going to slide in here like this. However, if you need to use the LED trick and put it across there, that works as well. So before, when I used the LEDs, I used a three volt battery pack. However, this time I'm going to use a nine volt. So like I said earlier, the contacts we want are these opposite ones here. So one on this side, one on this side, not across like this. If you just have one button, you'll take your positive, put it on one end of the contact, and then you'll just take a small wire and connect it between one of the terminals of your bulb. So like maybe from here to here, and then the negative goes here. And that'll just create a circuit. So when you push the button, current flows to the switch, then through the wire, then through the bulb, then to the negative. If you're using an LED, you need to pay attention to your polarity, so you can make this the negative side. Just, if it doesn't work, flip the LED around and, and try it again. If you have two buttons, we're gonna do the same kind of thing as, uh, as I've shown before. You'll just jump the power, so like positive here will be positive over here, and then the negative to the negative, and then you'll do the wire connect as well. So very simple, if you need a schematic, uh, those will be on the website as well for you to check out. So it's all wired up and you can see here, just like I said, we've got the positive and the negative coming into these terminals. And then on this terminal for the button, we have a wire to this lamp and then the negative here. I jumped those over to the corresponding positions here, connect the wire. And if I had another button, I'd do the same thing. I'd jump it over here, connect the wire. So you can pretty much do this for as many buttons as you want. And if we push the buttons in, 
you'll see here they light up incandescent and that definitely looks a lot better than the LED. And you don't have to mash them in anymore. They light up and they light up bright. So I hope you enjoyed this video of monitor elevator fixture wiring. Again, if you wanna see some more monitor fixture wiring and other projects, check out the long section. I have a link in the description. And another wiring tutorial for EPCO, which is very similar. There's some other resources available there. And for the wiring schematics and other resources that you might want for these buttons, there's also a link to, uh, to my website for, for this particular button. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.